Uh, hello everyone, my name is Mihai Ene. I work at Pacific Cancer Institute of Maui. I've been working here for about a year and a half and my treatment planning system is Eclipse. Was there anything special you needed to do to get the data set into your treatment planning system? Did you go through MEM or another third-party software? No, I didn't have any problems at all. I just created a patient in Eclipse, named it Plan Challenge, and imported everything as if it was a regular patient. We provided the original structure set. What, if any, additional structures did you create? I created rectum op, which is just the rectum minus TV 36.25 with a one millimeter margin. And that's just to help the optimization so that there's not too many conflicting calculations. I decided to create optimization PTV 36.25. So we have our prostate, our PTV 36. I converted a lot of them to H. These structures. My main thing was these hot and cold structures, which I created after my first optimization, after my first calculation. Did you use the NTO at all during this? Yes, I used the NTO. Um, I used uh, the automatic NTO at first, and I noticed that the PTV36 was underdosed at the edges. I experimented with some different numbers in, in the NTO. And this is what I ended up with, a distance from target border 0.3 and a fall off of 0.5. And this seemed to, to really help both my coverage, my minimum dose within PTV, and my confirmation number. So tell us about the start of your optimization, your geometric setup, your constraints. I had three arcs. One at zero, one at zero couch, one at 350, and one at 10. I'm sure that those were clear. We wouldn't have any problems with clearing. They're full arcs. I use 15x energy. I tried to limit my field size as much as possible, make it very tight, and in that way, I was hoping to decrease scatter to the testes and the bowel because I think the ideal number for the bowel and testes was zero. One of my arcs collimator angle of 90 degrees. What I was hoping to achieve with that is have the leaves travel from soup to inf and in that way help spare the urethra. There it is. And if you kind of play it and watch it, it's kind of doing what I was hoping it would do. So that was my setup. And as far as optimization, what I like to do is start by uh, placing constraints on the target alone and let the optimizer just just give it time and let it fully optimize on the targets alone until I'm satisfied with um, what that looks like. And um, what I do is I keep it paused on step one until the targets are fully optimized. And once I'm satisfied, I add constraints to all my organs at risk and I still keep... I, the whole time I keep it paused and just let it run its course, let it fully optimize. But once everything kind of looks good, I, I release it and uh, I let it move on through the steps. There's usually, I, I usually notice a big change at step two. So I pause it again and uh, watch it, make any, any changes I need to make. I make them within step one or two. I uh, sometimes go back to step one if I need to make major changes. And once I'm happy with what I see, is I do this for pretty much every plan, and this is what I did for the plan challenge. I release it, and I let the optimizer go through to step three and four. And then I also use the um, intermediate dose calculation, and I feel like uh, in most cases it helps, it helps cover for any differences between what the optimizer says we're going to get and what we get after calculation. Then I calculated my plan at 1.1 millimeters, I believe, uh, calculation grid size. After that, that is when I evaluated and created cold and hot structures to fill in any gaps or remove any spillage outside the PTV. What did you get when you first ran it through them, your original score? It was pretty low compared to what I got on the last run. I think 140, 
What did you do to get your score better? What changes did you make? I changed uh, my NTO settings, created hot and cold, those structures. So I looked at my coverage. So I took my uh, prescription dose and I converted it into a structure. I saw where I had cold spots that needed filling, and hot, what I call hot spots, or places where prescription dose spilled over the PTV margins. I drew those out and placed constraints on them in the following optimization. What I did is I made these structures high def, and within the optimizer, I decreased their resolution. And what that does is gives them, uh, it lets the optimizer sample an increased amount of um, data points in the st structure volume point cloud. So it seemed to really help. It helped with coverage, confirmation, and such. Another thing I did was I noticed that in trying to spare the neurovascular bundles, I was losing coverage around them. And so I created these small neurovascular bundles optimization structures which are almost identical to the actual neurovascular bundles but they don't they don't stick out of the PTV and they are made, contained within the actual neuro bundles and what I did is I treated them as targets so I kind of forced some purposely forced some dose in there and that helped my coverage by minimum dose within the PTV and probably helped with the confirmation a little bit. Those were not majorly helpful. I think the main thing was playing with the NTO function and repeatedly making cold and hot structures. How often did you stop to do a full calculation and upload your plan to Prono? I did it pretty often. I Every time I felt like I had an improved plan, I submitted it, up, I uploaded it to uh, Prono and uh, I looked to see where things got better and where things got worse. I think being able to do that was very helpful this year. I think that's probably why we received so many submissions, 420 compared to other years. It's just being able to upload it so fast and get scores so fast and see where we need to improve. What did you use as your checkered flag to know when it was time to stop? When <laughs> I stopped seeing improvements, you know, it's sort of time consuming and uh, have to be reasonable with, with time and everything. And it, it got to a point where the improvements were very, very minimal. Are there any other tips and tricks that you might be able to let others know out there? I tried to fix the artifact from the seeds. I didn't override the seeds themselves, of course. I, I just outlined them. Got a really high density, and you know there that that's the seed. It's, so it's got a density 30, 68, 69 pounds field units. And so I kind of I found the big ones, or the ones that created the most artifacts. They all had the same HU. I created a structure called artifact around them. I sampled the HU around the artifact to get an idea of what's really out there. And that's the average of that is what I assigned to the artifact. I didn't run a plan without covering up the artifact, so I don't know how much it really helped. Let's see, what else? I sometimes use um, body minus PTV structure. It's kind of a ring. Um, I didn't use it in this case, but I've had a lot of success with it. What I do is I just make a structure called body minus whatever PTV it is. I trim it a few centimeters or millimeters out of the PTV, and I set a constraint on it. And it usually helps avoid the uh, uh, prescription dose spilling out of the PTV and you know, makes the plants more conformal. And you would use that in conjunction with your NTO? I do, I do, but <clears throat> in this case I just use the NTO and my hot and cold structures. The, uh, the thing with the hot and cold structures is that they're very time consuming to brush up and you have to you have to make them after every calculation because they pop up in different places and they're on every single slide. I did it a couple times and then I, you know, I had enough. Yeah, sometimes you, <laughs> you got to do your actual work, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm curious. We were thinking about changing the leaf park position to different position than what our default is. So our default is for the park leaves to meet in the center. And we thought maybe that was contributing some small 
leakage to testes and bowel. A thought was to have the leaves park outside the field somewhere, the ones that aren't being used. So after all is said and done, what could we have done to make this experience better for you? I don't, I can't say much. And this was, this was very easy, very user friendly. Everything was very straightforward and explained very well. I actually really like the fact that you can uh, do that sort of thing and go back to the Prono website and re-upload, you know, plans even after the um, submission time is over. So there's definitely things left out there to try. I think the only thing I wrote in there was that I could have used a little more space in uploading those file. I think we were we were given 100 MB and um, if you calc the plan at one millimeter grid calculation size and a calculation box that includes everything that is needed for evaluating the plan, so from above the most superior contour to the below the most inferior one, I think it just goes over that limit of 100 MB. Okay, that's good. So it's not a big deal. I changed my grid size to um, one point oh something or 1.1 and um, and then I just made my calculation boxes as small as possible so I ended up with 0.106 okay and that gave you enough to get in there but yeah and then you know of course the, the smaller the calculation grid size the more my numbers agreed with those numbers because I noticed when I used the bigger grid size I was a little off. 